All right, guys, welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about heat conditioning, conditioning the dog to the hot weather and to hot surfaces. I've made a similar video of this on YouTube, um, more particularly regarding cold weather. I also mentioned a little bit of the warm weather there, but this one is specifically made for hot weather. It's something that came up uh, some time ago. A friend of mine sent me a message, and now that the temperatures are starting to get really warm, especially down here in the south, I mean, here in Texas, the temperatures are reaching over 100 degrees, 106 degrees by you know noon, and it, it became really sudden. So what happens is a lot of people become very cautious of the heat, and some people will just downright don't understand. And not only do they not understand, but they could potentially put their dogs at risk because they're not fully aware of the potential dangers that a hot temperature can have on a dog that is not acclimated. So that's what I want to tackle in this episode. Also, the other thing that happens is there are people who don't understand. They don't even have a dog. Um, and then they will shame other people who just happen to be exercising their dogs. And it is a little bit warm, and people will start immediately shaming those people publicly. Okay, this does happen. Some people are shitty like this. They don't mind their own business. And sometimes they do mean well, but uh, but they but they just don't approach it properly. So I'm going to answer some questions here and I'm going to address this whole thing with hot temperatures. So the first thing to remember about dogs is dogs are incredibly adaptable animals. They are so adaptable that they can, and they have been, okay? They have been surviving, surviving in, in uh, and not really surviving, but really thriving in just about every climate the planet Earth has to offer. Okay, just about every region, there are always dogs, okay? From very extreme cold temperatures to very extreme hot temperatures, and I have seen it myself. And yes, you hear about dogs in different regions, and and we know that there are dogs in very hot temperatures, very hot climates, but it doesn't it doesn't quite hit you as much as when you see it, when you witness it. And I have, and I've been, uh, I've seen it, okay? I've seen it. Once you see it, it really baffles you how adaptable and how strong dogs really can be. You know, there are some species that you only see, there are some animals that you will only see in certain parts of the world. You won't see them in a different region, right? Um, and... And and you see that, and, and you see, you know if you move those animals, those species to a different part of the world, they don't do well. They'll they'll die. But humans and dogs are, uh, and there are other other animals too. But but if you look at humans and you look at dogs, right? We've had a a very symbiotic relationship for a very long time. Humans and dogs are very similar. We we can travel, we can move, we can relocate, and. We will do really well with some adaptation, and dogs are the same exact way. So I want to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of what I have seen. Okay, I, I lived in Afghanistan for 18 months. This is when I was working as a contractor, working with the contract working dogs, and I saw two very distinct things that truly opened my eyes to the capability of dogs. Number one, one of the things that I saw naturally as a contractor with working dogs is I saw dogs that were not born in that climate. Okay, These are not dogs that were meant to be in this extreme climate of 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And you heard that right, 120 degrees, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes it gets even hotter than that. Okay, These are dogs that... Um, that we uh, that we purchased, but we uh, I mean the company that I work for, the company purchased from Europe. Okay, dogs that were um, raised or born raised in uh, in a in a fairly cool climate, and then they went to Texas 
Texas for the training, right? Once the company acquired the dogs, they would go to Texas. Texas is pretty warm. They would, uh, you know, go through the training in Texas. And then from there, they would go straight to Kandahar. Kandahar, um, Afghanistan is very warm. I mean, it, it's ridiculously warm. Some of you guys have been abroad. Some of you haven't. Um, but 120 degrees is no joke. I mean, here we feel like we're melting at 105, um, but 100 and 115, 120, that's like a whole different level. And some of you guys have experienced that. And now, you know, people will think, well, you know, you just don't work them. But that's not the case. These dogs, once they go to Kandahar, if they immediately were to start working in, at 120 degrees, then yes, they would not do well. They would pass out and they there would be a lot of heat injuries. But that's not how it happens. We go through these acclimation process through this acclimation process. The dogs go through uh, different uh, phases of of adaptability. You know, first we we take them there. They uh, you know they go to their runs, their kennels. And depending on the setup, you know, they'll have fans, uh, they have indoor accessibility. Back, you know, back in uh, when I first got there, which I believe was like around 2010, 2011, um, the company just was just getting uh, a presence in, in, uh, in Afghanistan. Now, the military working dogs are different. Military working dogs have their own setup. They have their own AC, very ventilated um, facility for the dogs. So the dogs are fairly comfortable, and the dogs sometimes are are there with the handlers. Um, you know, even uh, you know, even in the in their um, in their housing, which some of their housing does have pretty nice AC, right? Um, that's not to say that the military working dogs don't adapt. They also have to go through their adaptability to the heat. To their through their acclimation, but from my experience, when we got there as a contractor, okay, with this company, we had whatever was given to us. So we didn't have a whole lot of AC. So we did the best that we could to keep our dogs comfortable. But we also had to exercise them. You know, we also had to take them for walks. That was one of the things that all the handlers had to do. We had to make sure that all these dogs were exercised. On top of that, they had to maintain a training schedule. They had to train. They couldn't just stay indoors all day long with a fan in front of them or in the AC if we, if we had AC. They had to have the working schedule. They had to have a training schedule. So all of this gradual exposure for short periods of time to the heat made it possible for these dogs to function in a very, very hot climate. Okay, we had handlers that were working their dogs, working, okay, like actually working at the gates, checking vehicles. And sometimes they would check like 30 vehicles at a time. And they would do this when the temperature was like 120. Because what happens, just because it gets hot, and it gets hot for a good period of time over there, it doesn't mean like, okay, the dogs are not going to work. You know, we're only going to pull the dogs out when it's nice and cool and when it's winter time, but that's not how it works. The the ECPs, the checkpoints, they they work throughout the day, so that means there has to be a dog doing part of their job. And now they're not there all day long. They are shifts, so you know a team will will go a certain will work a certain shift, but these dogs are still working when it's really hot. Now, when they're not working, they're they're inside and they're comfortable until they have to do the next batch of vehicles again. But it still remains. When I when I saw that and experienced that, it truly um, it it truly made me appreciate the the capabilities of the dog. And you would think, oh, you know, these dogs they have their their doggles. I think they're called right. They have their their booties. On their paws, so that they don't heat the hot. Con they don't. They don't touch the hot ground. Nonsense. Like they truly don't. And some of the military working dogs. There's a distinction there between the military working dogs and the contract working dogs. Um, it, it's. It wasn't always the same. 
some of the things that we had, some of the things that they had, we didn't have, and we had to make do with what we had. So our dogs didn't have the booties to protect their paws from touching the hot gravel. They didn't. So that's another thing in question a lot of times. Is, you know, you even see signs, caution signs here in the U.S. that tell you, you know, if you, if it's too hot, don't walk your dog because... Uh, it will burn your dog's pads. And, you know, they're talking about temperatures in the 90s or the 80s. And there are actual signs like that. When I was there, the dogs were working and training when it was like over 100. And the gravel was super hot. So how did these dogs train and work in really very, very hot temperatures? We're going back to adaptability. Okay, adaptability is a it's a very real thing. So these dogs, it'd be like the equivalent of if you ever wear sh- like if you always wear shoes and suddenly you take your shoes off and I ask you to walk outside in your driveway or, or on your lawn, you're going to feel every little blade of grass and every tiny little bit of, um, you know, rock and dust at the bottom of your feet because you're not used to it. You're just wearing comfortable shoes all day long. Suddenly I ask you to wear, you know, to wear nothing on your shoes and go out there. You're going to feel every tiny bit of texture on the ground. And if the temperature is warm, you're not even going to be able to walk, you know, more than like a couple of feet before you jump back in the shade because your feet are going to be burning because your feet are not adapted to that because you are in all day long comfort of the the inside of the house or your shoes and then suddenly you know it would be unreasonable for me to tell you okay go step outside and go for a walk when it's 100 degrees outside and go walk on the gravel you you wouldn't make it you you'd be suddenly just on the ground uh, or you'd be just tippy toeing back to the house but there are people that walk barefoot quite a bit right and these people can handle a lot more than somebody who's not used to walking barefoot Right, you, and yes, they will feel the grass and they will feel the gravel and they will feel the heat. But their feet, okay, the the soles of their feet are much more prepared because they have gone through that adaptation process. It's the same exact thing with our dogs. The dogs in Afghanistan, the contract working dogs, the ones that didn't have the booties. Sometimes you saw the military working dogs, you know, with the booties. We didn't have that, so the dogs did very well their pads didn't get torn up their pads didn't get you know they didn't get uh, blistered they were adapted to that through the gradual process of exposure okay the second experience that i that i had in afghanistan was you know i remember seeing because as contractors we had to travel from base to base i remember traveling from bagram to Kabul on a soft vehicle, you know, not convoy, just a soft vehicle, uh, just driving. <laughs> just that in itself is crazy, different story. But I remember, you know, making that drive and seeing dogs, just dogs out in the middle of nowhere. I remember even seeing people. I remember seeing kids. We'd be driving and there'd be nothing for like miles, just desert just nothing absolutely nothing just the you know the the road which was crappy itself but then on either side of the road absolutely nothing nothing just hot blistering heat and we would see children just like out in the middle of nowhere and we would be wondering what is happening like these kids are going to die, but they're just hanging out like nothing. And then we would also see dogs and the dogs, same thing. I remember being, you know, on the base and sometimes some parts of the base are, uh, are, you know, they're not concrete walls all the way 20 feet up. Some, some parts of the base are chain link. You know, they're, they're it's almost like minimal, minimal uh, blockage between the outside of the base and the inside of the base just with a lot of barbed wire, but some parts of the base were like that. And I remember seeing just the local Afghan dogs in just incredible, just in unbearable heat. 
I remember thinking, my God, it's so freaking hot. And these dogs would be hanging out. And some of these were puppies, very young dogs, just hanging out like nothing. Just chilling, taking a nap, walking around. And I remember thinking, there is nothing, there's no shelter anywhere near this part of the base on the outside. And these dogs are just hanging out. They're not, their tongues are not all the way on the ground. They're not panting. They don't look like they're passing out. They're just walking very normal. And again, that gave me an insight into the power that dogs have when it comes to the temperatures. And really, we all do. Uh, we really do. We have the ability to adapt to uh, quite a bit as well. So why I gave you these two experiences is to let you know that your dog can actually function in very hot temperatures if conditioned to it, if you take the time to transition them into it. Here is how your dog is not going to do well in the hot temperatures. This applies to the cold as well, but we're talking about the hot temperatures because it's relatable to this time of the year. If you're listening to this episode around this time of the year at least, here is how you're going to mess it up. Here's how you're going to mess it up is if you always have your dog in the nice, cool AC, in the comfort of the house where it's nice and cool. And then naturally you take that dog outside. That dog outside is not going to last. They're going to be outside. They're going to do their potty break. You're going to toss a ball maybe a couple of times and they're going to be begging you to, to go back inside. Okay. That dog is not adapted to the heat. That dog will not do well. And if you do try to keep that dog outside longer, that dog is at a higher risk of having a heat injury. We don't want that. So if your dog is in this constant state of comfort and cool, you know, temperature, and you don't bring him out very often, and that's something that you are willing to do, then that's fine. But don't expect that dog to do well in the heat. That dog will not do well in the heat. Okay, that dog is at a high risk of, of suffering from a heat injury. And that could be from blisters all the way to strokes. So that's how you're going to mess it up. Okay, the, the way to do it, okay, the way to transition them and get them used to the, to the hot temperatures and acclimate them so that they do well is to purposely... Okay, in a controlled manner, force them to be exposed to warm temperatures for a period of time. Okay, for a for a digestible period of time per session. I'll give you some examples. One of the things that I do with my dogs, especially my working dogs, because we train and trial throughout the year. There is no like trial season for us where we go. During this time of the year, I'm not going to trial. Whatever trial presents itself, and if the trial is right, and, uh, you know, we're ready for trial, you know, we don't trial every year. We have to sometimes deal with injuries on the dog, so sometimes we go like an entire season, an entire year without trialing. But if we are ready to trial, we don't go, we're not going to trial in the summer. Some people do because they don't want to take the time of acclimating the, their dogs to the heat, and that's perfectly fine. But, you know, what What I do with my dogs is I purposely will expose them to the heat. Some of the things that I'll do is, you know, their their area with their crate, I'm not always going to have the, the AC on, okay? And some of the things that I have done, I'm going to tell you what I did. You don't have to try to replicate this. And if you do, you have to be careful because not every dog is at the same level, Okay. So I'm going to put that disclaimer right there. So one of the things that I did is I would crate my dog in the car when it was hot, okay, with the hatch open. Okay, I wouldn't bake him in there with all the doors closed. But with the hatch open, I would put him in there in the crate when it was hot, okay. And, and I've been doing this, and I've never had any heat injuries. I've never, I've never cooked my dog. 
and I would leave him there for about 20, 15, 20 minutes at a time. I would leave him there. They would be warm. And then, you know, they would still get some fresh air because the, the hatch was open. So they would get some ventilation. But I would leave him there for about 15 minutes at a time. And then I would get him out and put him in the nice, cool office. Put him in a nice, cool office. And, you know, you could tell, they're like, oh, my God, it was hot. Yeah, it was hot. And I'm not leaving you there until you cook. I'm just leaving you there for about 15 minutes when it's nice and warm. And that depends on the time of the day, the time of the year. So sometimes it would be like between uh, 11 and noon. Sometimes it would be between 2 and 3. Uh, it would depend. But about 15, maybe 20 minutes at a time, I'll bring him inside. And then I will repeat that like maybe a couple of times a day. And uh, once they got more and more acclimated, I would do that for about, you know, half an hour uh, to about 45 minutes. So they would still get the ventilation from the door being open. It's important that we do that. If we close the door, there is no ventilation. On top of that, they're hot. That is a recipe for disaster. We don't want to do that. So if you're going to put them in there, what I did is when I put them in there, the door was open so that they would get that at least that cool breeze. Um, so at least there was ventilation, even if they were hot. And then our training sessions, we didn't avoid the heat. We would train when it was hot. And I still do. I still train when it's hot. So uh, we're not just training when it's nice and cool first thing in the morning and late in the evening. Although the bulk of the training sessions happen then, we still train when it's hot. Right? We have club three times a week at our club. And two of those meetings are in the evening, but one of those meetings is on a Saturday at 9 a.m. until we finish, which usually goes until about noon or so. So we're training when it's really hot. And we don't want to, you know, pamper our dogs with just cool temperatures. The same thing with the ground, okay, for the hot surface. If I want to adapt my dog, I want my dog to be uh, acclimated to the to the hot surfaces like the you know like the hot gravel, uh, then I want to make sure that I do it in a way that they're doing it not when it's the hottest, but when it's starting to get warm, I'll, I'll kind of walk with them and I'll play with them uh, when it's you know a little bit of uh, you know a little bit warm but not too too excessively hot. You know, I'm not going to throw the ball too much on the gravel because it's not good for their joints. So I'm not going to have them run on gravel or on on the sidewalk because it's not ideal. It's not good for their joints. But they will go for walks. There will be a little bit of light playing when it's, when it's warm to get their pads acclimated to the heat. And my goal is not to make them like crazy adaptable to the heat or crazy adapted to the heat like they were in Afghanistan, right? In Texas, we're not going to, likely, we're not going to experience 130 degrees. And if we do, it's it's going to be for a very short period of time. Uh, so there is really no need for me to try to acclimate my dog for that level of temperature. Now, if that was the norm, if it was like Afghanistan where in the summer it's like 120 between 115 to 130 for, you know, months, then yes, my standard would be to acclimate the dogs to that extreme temperature. But since we're not really worrying about that too much, especially down here in Texas, you know, up there up north, wherever you be, may be listening this from, it might not even be that bad. Uh, so you might not have to worry to you might might not have to worry about acclimating your dogs to that extreme of a temperature, uh, but the point of this episode is to let you know you can and you should still exercise your dog during the summer. You should not be afraid to uh, bring your dog outside in the summer. Okay, and sometimes dogs that are not acclimated, they want to come inside. They'll tell you, "I don't want to be outside. I want to go inside." Okay, but that's that's the same thing with anybody. If, if I take you outside and you're not used to it, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to be like, I just want to go inside. Okay, but if I wanted to acclimate you to it or if you wanted to acclimate yourself to the heat, you would stay out there for a little bit longer 
right? So we can do that with our dogs as long as we keep an eye on them, right? There are some red flags that you want to pay attention to. I want to give you those as well. So the red flags are, you know, if your dog's tongue, if their tongue is hanging way, way out, right, and their breathing looks in looks incredibly difficult it sounds incredibly forced you have to bring your dog into the cool temperatures asap okay that now you may have kept your dog outside a little bit too long if their tongues are hanging way the hell down right they're like their eyes look like they're popping they're breathing very heavily you can hear their throats as they're breathing Okay, that means your dog has been in the heat way, way too long. Bring him in the cool temperature and cool him off right away. Okay, we don't want to push our dogs to that extreme because even though they can handle extreme temperatures when properly acclimated, if they're not acclimated yet, that's when things can get risky and that's when people can get in trouble. So always, always pay attention. So uh, that's what I wanted to let you know. Pay attention to those signs. The other thing too, I'm going to give you a couple of other things that sometimes people um, people make mistakes on. If your dog is outside and it's getting kind of hot and you want to cool your dog off, do not soak him with water. This seems like a good idea, but it's not. If you pour water on them when it's hot... Here's what will happen. Their top coat, their fur, will maintain the moisture, okay? And the heat will just heat up that moisture on their coat and will actually increase the temperature on their body. So the mo- if you get your dog wet because you're thinking, oh, it's hot, I'm just going to pour water on him, that's not the best thing because... That will cool them off for a little bit, but the moisture that will be trapped on their coat will get warm by the outside temperature. And once that moisture gets warm, that will heat your dog up even more. So people sometimes screw that up because they think I want to get my dog cool by putting water in the, pouring water on them. Not a good idea. If you are going to put water on them, Put water on their underbelly, okay, on their flanks, their belly, the armpits. That's the best spot for water. If your dog is hot, the best spot for water is their belly, the armpits, and the flanks. All underneath where the fur is the thinnest, okay, not on top where the fur is the thickest. The other the other thing that people sometimes do when it comes to the hot temperatures is people will shave their dogs. Now, if you have like a if you have a poodle, if you have a um, you know some types of terriers that just their hair just keeps growing, those dogs you can give them a summer cut. You, if you bring your dog to a groomer and you ask him for a summer cut, they know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. But your older dogs, you know, like the double-coated dogs, your German Shepherds, your Huskies, uh, your your older types of dogs that have, you know, your Labs that have a lot of fur. Um, those dogs, sometimes people go, oh, I'm going to shave my dogs so that they're cooler in the summer. Again, not the best idea. Our dogs in Afghanistan, not once did they get shaved. And we had German Shepherds, double-coated German shepherds and these guys did not get shaved and they did well okay because here's what happens their fur the thick fur actually insulates them from the heat okay that's a new concept for a lot of people the fur actually makes it so that the hot temperature outside is not as hot on their skin. The fur is such an important tool that they have, which people don't understand. That's why we don't pour water on it when it's hot. Okay? Um, And we don't shave them when it's hot. 
Remember, if you shave them, that hot temperature, the sun, the outside temperature will be in direct contact with their skin, thus increasing the overall body temperature. What the double coat fur does is it keeps some of that hot temperature outside of their skin. So that's another thing I would recommend. Don't shave your dog. I'm telling you all of this from experience. Okay, I've experienced the extreme hot temperatures. The dogs that I have worked with have worked and thrived and done very well in extremely hot temperatures. I'm not giving I'm not giving you hypothesis here. I'm giving you my experience. And so uh, those are the things that you want to be aware of. Okay, Don't pour water on a hot dog, especially if they're going to stay outside. If you are, make sure it's on the belly, flanks, and armpit. Don't shave them. And keep an eye on their tongues, uh, the heavy breathing. And all that. that means they're telling you they are way too hot. You need to cool them off, bring them inside as soon as possible. Okay? So... Don't be afraid to work your dog outside. You should keep working them outside. And if you run into the occasional uh, rude person that tells you you should bring your dog inside, don't worry about them. Just tell them to go fuck themselves and just move on. You do your own thing. But acclimate your dog to the heat. That's pretty much it for this episode. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Follow the podcast. Uh, Follow... um, the YouTube channel, Doctoring is My Passion, Facebook page, Doctoring is My Passion, Instagram. Now, I just recently started a TikTok account. Um, so follow that as well. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.